Welcome to this first tutorial about Blender. Today we're going to build a house using the basic operations of Blender. I'm going to show you around the user interface and we'll see what we can do. So first, this is your 3D view of your scene. You see a cube, a camera and a lamp. This is basically where you edit the most of your time. On the top right, you see the Project Explorer, which is the scene, and the scene has the camera, the cube, and the lamp. On the bottom, we have a timeline. On the left right, uh, side, we have some uh, operations we can do. And on the right side here, we have render materials and modifier panels. And I'm going to describe that in later tutorials. So for now, we just have the cube here placed in the middle. And if we want to move the cube around, we can simply drag these arrows. You can see here, there's a red arrow pointing at the X direction, as you can see in the bottom left. Also, the green one is this one is the Y and the blue is the Z. Now, if you drag the red line, or the red arrow, you see you can move it around. If you press ESC, you cancel the operation. If you let go, it's there. Um, you can also undo with Ctrl Z. Um, you can also move by using the G key. If you're uh, more getting more familiar in the process of Blender, you'll probably not drag all these arrows around. You just press the G key and you can move it freely around. Problem is with freely moving that you have no idea how exactly you are moving in 3D space. So it's easier to lock on a certain axis like the arrows did. If you want, for example, to lock your movement on the x-axis, you press G for movement, X to lock x-axis. So now you see I'm moving around the x-axis. The same goes for the Y, G for move, Y to lock y-axis, and for the z-axis, G for move, Z for z-axis. If I hold Ctrl while moving, you'll see it snaps to the grid. Nice thing about that is that you always have nice uh, snapping coordinates. So instead of 10.1.054, it's just 10, 20, 30, etc. So another operator is scaling. So if you want to scale, you press the S key. Press the S, and now I can freely scale my object. If I want to snap on the grid with my scaling, I press S and hold Ctrl while moving. You see, you exactly scale at, uh, what is the, let's see the resolution, 0.1. So on the bottom left, you see I scale with 1.2, 1.3, etc. I'm gonna cancel this one. You can also scale on a certain axis. So if, for example, if I want to scale on the Y axis, I press S for scale, Y to lock the Y axis. And if I hold Ctrl, I really nicely snap. If I let go of Ctrl, it's just freely scaling. I press S to cancel. Last operation is rotation. So you press R for that. I can freely rotate my cube. Also hold Ctrl to snap it on one degree. I press S to cancel because I can also lock this to a certain axis. So if I press R for rotate, Z for Z axis, you'll see I can nicely rotate around. So what we've learned now is movement with the G key, rotating with the R key and scaling with the S key. If we use the X, Y and Z buttons after we press one of the operators, it will lock to that axis. Another nice feature is that you can enter the exact amount of um, scaling, rotation and moving. For example, if I want to scale this cube by twice its size, I can press S for scaling and I can look on the grid where it's exactly two, but on the bottom left you see now it's twice the size because the scaling is two. But I can do it differently. Now I press S and I press two. Now you'll see that on the bottom left, there is my value 2. I can also continue by 0.5. Now you see it's 2.5. If I want to erase this, 
value, I just press backspace and you'll see it goes back to two. I remove the dot and I remove now everything. So I can enter 1.5. You see a little bar moving along where you press backspace, which acts like a cursor. So if I add one and press enter, now I'm back to where I was. Rotating, the same thing. If I want to rotate my cube 45 degrees around the X axis, I press R for rotate, X for the X axis, and I press 45. If I press enter, I confirm now that it's 45 degrees rotated around the X axis. I'm going to undo this with Ctrl Z. Now we're in 3D space here. I'd like to show you how to move around. I'm using an Apple mouse. And this magic mouse supports swiping. So if I swipe from right to left, I rotate like this from left to right. I rotate in opposite direction. If I move bottom to top or top to bottom, you'll see the camera moves up and down. Now, if you use a scroll mouse, which is common for Windows computers, you just hold the middle mouse and you're going to drag around. So if I move up and down, left and right. So I can also rotate around my scene. Since I prefer my magic mouse, um, I just swipe around. So that's it about the basic operators about moving, rotating and scaling for now. What I'd like to show you is how we can manipulate this cube. In 3D modeling, you always start, or you might want to start with a certain primitive. For example, a cube, which you're going to manipulate into a shape you want. So what we're going to do is manipulate this cube on all these corners and sides. I'm going to switch to edit mode to do this. And when I hold control and scroll, I can zoom in. And with my right mouse button, I can select all these corners. These corners are called vertexes. These vertices make up an edge. If I hold shift, I can select multiple of them. Now I've selected this edge. Four edges together make a face. If I only want to work with faces, it could be annoying to just select these four vertices all the time. So at the bottom here, you can choose between Vertex Select, Edge Select, and Face Select. If you switch to Edge Select, you'll see you cannot select the corners. You can only select the edges of the cube. So four of these edges make a face in this cube. If I press the last one, you'll see these dots coming on. If I select them with my right mouse button, I can work on a face. The minimal size of a face exists about three vertices. So this one is four, but if you imagine here a diagonal line, you'll see that that could be also a face. You can now apply all the basic operators you've learned to a face, an edge or a vertex. For example, if I switch back to Vertex Select and I press right on my right mouse button for this corner and I press G, and remember G was moving, I can manipulate my cube. You can also press Escape to cancel. If I only want to move around the Z axis, I can press G, Z to lock Z axis, I can move around. If I hold Ctrl, it snaps on the grid. I can use rotate, but it doesn't do anything since it's one vertex. If I select the second one, you'll see I can rotate it around when I press R. Same goes for scaling. So you now see that with just these three operators I can easily manipulate my cube. And I'd like to show you how you can work easier with a selection. If I rotate around my cube, you notice that here is a vertex. But if I'm working from this side, I cannot select this vertex unless I'm rotating and select it over here. We're going to fix that. Currently, 
we are in solid view, as shown here. But if I go to wireframe, now I can look through my complete object and can just select all the vertices I wanted. So, for example, if I look from this side, I can just select the vertices I want. This could be very helpful. If I press A, it deselects all selected vertices. So, for example, if I have selected some arbitrary vertices, but I just want to select this one, I can just click. But sometimes you just want to deselect all the vertices. So then you press A and they're all gone. If you want to select all the vertices, you press A again and you have select them all. Another thing to show you is this one. I was wondering where it is, but in wireframe mode it's gone. In the solid mode it's there. What it does is if you want to select this one in the back, which is behind this cube, or if you have two overlapping vertices, for example, if I go like the side view, let me see, go to the front view. So now there are basically two vertices behind each other here. Here you can see them, that one and that one. So if I go back to the front, and I select this one, and I rotate, you see I didn't select that one in the back. If I want to select that one in the back, I have to enable this. So now I can select the one in the back. Let me see. So what I want to do is go I accidentally hit that one. I'm going to show you two more selection operators. One is the block select. If I press B, you get a rectangle which you can drag around. So now you'll see I have selected these two in the back. If I switch back to the front view, press A to deselect all and turn this one off. If I now block select this, you'll see I've only selected the front since I disabled the limit selection to visible. Or I enabled the limit selection to visible. So what we're going to do now is go back into front view. We press tab to leave the edit mode. And we're now going to create our house. So first we start with the base of the house. As you can see, we are below the zero level. So I'm going to move it upwards. So I press G for move. Z for Z axis, hold down control to snap on the grid and I um, press the left mouse to confirm. Now we are going to create another cube by pressing, let me see here, this tab and you press here on cube. As you can see, we've added another cube. We want to have this one on top of the other ones. We press G again, press Z for Z axis, hold down control and move upwards. Like this, and we press left to confirm. Now it's quite annoying that this cube is out of our viewport. So what we can do is hold down shift and scroll upwards. If we scroll upwards, or left to right if you have a magic mouse, you actually pen your view. So now everything is inside our view again. What I'm going to do now is going to perspective view by just moving from left to right and up to down, dragging my mouse so you can see what we've got. So I want to make this a triangular roof. So what I'm going to do is going to edit mode with pressing the tab key. Here you can enter edit mode, but you can also use the tab key, which makes it easier. What we're going to do is select only the top with using the B, which is rectangular. But first we need to deselect all. So here we go, we select these. Now we press S for scaling. And we press X to lock on the X axis. 
Now if you hold down control and move it to the center and confirm with the left mouse, you now see we have created a house. If I press the tab key, I can leave object mode. Now if you're very curious what this will look like when you're rendering this, you can press the render key uh, button over here. So if we press on this, it will render our house. But as you can see, it's going outside of our rim image. So I press the escape key and what we can do is select the camera over here and move it a little bit upwards. But the thing is that we don't know what we'll see from the camera. So it's easier to just press the numeric zero or select camera and now move, uh, move the camera upwards. As you can see here, by the orange color, it's selected. So we press G for move, Z for Z axis, and we just move it upwards. Just when everything fits the frame, you press the left mouse key and click render again. You'll now see that our house is completely inside the view. If you want to save this image, you can go to image, save as image, and you can just enter a PNG uh, file name and say save to file. Then you're done. You can press ask to cancel and ask again to go back to your 3D view. This is all for the basics of Blender lesson one. We've learned to move with the G key, to scale with the S key, to rotate with the R key. We've learned how to lock the axis by pressing the X, Y and Z buttons. We've learned the difference between edit and object mode. We have learned what a vertex is, these corner points. We have learned what an edge is, these sides. And we have learned what a face is, these planes over here. That's basically it for today. I'll see you in the next episode.